In this video, we will conduct a live test to measure the external earth fault loop impedance. This test confirms the integrity of the supplier's earthing system and establishes a baseline for future inspections. For the demonstration, we'll be using the MFT Pro from Test Instrument Solutions. However, there are a few critical considerations before using the test instrument. Let's go over them. The test will be performed at the origin of the installation. First, we need to identify the earthing arrangement. This is crucial for understanding the maximum permitted value from BS7671 so we can compare it to the results obtained during testing. Starting at the service head and incoming supply, we observe a three-phase system with 100 amp fuses per phase. Next, we examine the earthing conductor and its connection to the incoming supply cable. The earthing conductor in this installation is connected to the side of the cutout, where the neutral is also connected. This confirms a TNCS earthing arrangement, commonly referred to on-site as PME, protective multiple earthing. You'll often see a PME sticker near the service head. According to BS7671, the maximum external earth fault loop impedance for a TNCS earthing arrangement is 0.35 ohms. The protective bonding conductors in this installation are terminated in a separate main earthing terminal, MET, rather than the distribution board. One conductor connects to the water supply and the other connects to the building's structural steelwork. Although we couldn't locate the incoming water stop tap, the installation's age suggests the water supply may use plastic piping, making it unlikely to act as an extraneous conductive part. However, the steel framework is clearly connected and constitutes an extraneous conductive part. Remember to select your PPE based on your risk assessment and your safe systems of work. To measure the true external earth fault loop impedance, parallel earth paths must be removed. In this installation, it's straightforward to disconnect the earthing conductor from the protective bonding conductors at the MET. However, this cannot be done until the installation is de-energized. In some installations, the earthing and protective bonding conductors are connected directly within the distribution board's earth terminal. In such cases, is you would disconnect the earthing conductor from the earth bar. We have got a remote isolator in this installation, but I've decided not to carry out the external earth fault loop impedance from this point to replicate what you often see in training settings for this test. Before operating the isolating switch, it's good practice to remove local loads by turning off all devices in the distribution board. For larger loads, such as an 18 kilowatt heater, turn them off at their local isolators first. Once all devices are off, you can operate the main isolating switch in the distribution board. At this point, you may choose to lock off the isolator. Note that in some cases, is locking off the main switch can make removing the distribution board cover difficult. This is a common consideration during endpoint assessments like AM2 and AM2S. A little top tip for you when you position your locking off device, I've kept it over the area which is the neutral termination, allowing full access to L1, L2 and L3 which I'll need during the test. Before proceeding with the test, investigate the potential for diverted neutral currents. This is typically done using a clip-on current meter, such as the TIS-570. We'll cover this full process in a future video. You might wonder how a live test is possible with the distribution board isolated. Remember, only the outgoing circuits are isolated. The incoming side of the isolating switch remains live, allowing the test to be performed. It's critical to ensure all outgoing circuits are de-energizers, as removing the earthing conductor while circuits are live poses risks of electric shock, fire, and possible explosions during an earth fault. Often on site you hear this test being called the ZE test. As we look at our electrical installation certificate we can see it says external earth fault loop impedance and in bracket ZE, Z is for impedance and E is for external so the slang term on site for this is the ZE test. Now for the exciting bit we're going to fire up our MFT Pro, press and hold the button it comes on, inserting our leads appropriately into the top of the machine and now we're ready to carry out that test but just remember folks we're looking at things like GS38, so again, look at the tip probe. It doesn't want to be any greater than four mil. This is considerably less. So remember to choose the correct test equipment and test leads. Now press our loop impedance test. It just confirms the leads that we need. We are doing a two lead test as a high current test. If we had any downstream RCDs, which we haven't got in this installation, we could do it on a three lead load test. Now we're going to probe on in the safest possible manner. That means our crocodile clip, first of all, is going to go around our earthing conductor and make a nice electrical connection on there. So just give it a little squeeze to confirm it's on nice and tight. And then we're going to probe onto the live part of the installation. We said earlier on that the outgoing side was dead, so we're going to probe onto the line connections underneath. So we're going to start with the brown line conductor first as we probe into there. Then what we've got to do is press and hold our button. So as I press and hold our button, it should then give me the reading for impedance, which we're interested in, which is 0.18 of an ohm. We're going to take it off there and we're going to move now on to the second line conductor, which is the black one. So in, press and hold our test button. And we're trying to achieve the highest of the three readings we could get, 0 0.17. So again, the first reading was higher. 
off again, and then back onto the third one, press and hold our test button, and we achieve a reading of 0 0.15. So we would record in our box heading in our test paperwork for ZE, or the external earth fault loop impedance of the installation, 0 0.18 ohms. However, you can avoid this live test and get your reading by inquiry for your external air fault loop impedance, but you can't avoid live tests on solar installations. In order to check out the video, it's on screen now.